Good morning, everyone. It's Jeanette with Evil Vintage Designs. I wanted to show you how it is that I created this little bouquet of flowers using these silicone makeup brushes that I purchased on Amazon. I will attach the link in the description box below the video if you'd like to take a look at them. And I just happened to buy them because I thought they were interesting. I wasn't sure what I would be able to do with them. And then I started playing and discovered that you can do a multitude of things, not all of which I've discovered yet. So this is what I've learned so far. All right, so let me go through the product list that you'll need to do this painting. You'll need some silicone brushes. I have a white Posca pen and the tip is a 0.7. I have a black gel ink pen. It's a uh, 0.5. I have alcohol in my mini mister. These are by Ranger. I'm going to use my, I'm not sure what this is called. I call it a, um, I'm not sure what I call it, a pouncer. I've got some 99% alcohol. I've got a couple of little palettes here, and the colors that I'll be using are um, Purple Twilight, Crimson, Aquamarine, Lettuce, Botanical, Metal, and those are all by Ranger. And then I have Calabasa Orange, which is Pumpkin Orange, by Jacquard Pinata. All right, so the first thing that I did was I wanted to to create the background. Oh, I'm sorry. Also, I used a little snow cap, but you can use Blanco Blanco by Pinata or snow cap, whatever, whichever one you have is fine. So I wanted to create a darker side and a lighter side on this painting for the background. So I took my aquamarine. First, I put a little alcohol down on the paper. I put a little aquamarine on this side. And then I forgot one more color. Flamingo by Ranger. That one in the middle. And I also used um, Honeycomb, which is by Ranger on this side. Oops, sorry about that. Then I just switch, swished it around a little bit like this. And then I used this one to blend the colors on the paper. What's great about these brushes is that, is that they clean off very easily. So you can reuse them unlike regular brushes. After you've used them in alcohol ink for a while, they get a little funny. I always buy inexpensive brushes, but I may not have to buy them too often anymore. took my heat gun and I dried it.
And then I took the mini mister, which again has alcohol in it, and I just sprayed it a little bit like that. And then I used the pouncer to further blend the colors. I forgot. I also added the uh, white. I'm clogged. Let me see if I can unclog that. All right, let's try another one. I wanted to soften the colors a little bit. That's why I added the white. So let's mix that again. And then come back with this. You could do the background any way you like. It's not a big deal. This is just what I did yesterday to create that painting. I wanted a softer background. Okay, and this is where the fun begins. Take the first color that you'd like to use. In this case, I'm going to use the uh, amethyst. I'm sorry, the uh, purple twilight. I put a little bit in one of the wells. And then I used this one, which is pointy. Let me show you how easily it cleans off. I have a little red on there. And that's it. It's clean and reusable. So I dipped it in the color and then I just began to do little circles like this until it dried. First I tried putting the uh, paint on the paper, and that worked, but it would take forever to dry. So I discovered that putting it down like this works best. Here's my little rosebuds.
Now I'm going to use crimson. I haven't even cleaned it. Just keep swirling it. You can use your dryer to dry it if it's too wet. I just blew on this. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm still getting over the flu. I'm going to throw a couple of little rosebuds here. And now I'm going to use the Calabasa Orange. And next I'm going to use the aquamarine. And I'm going to use the aquamarine first to create. I didn't create the bees. So let's do that right now. If your paint starts to dry, just throw a drop of alcohol in it. And in the uh, painting that I did prior, I wanted a textured vase. This is why I did it this way. All right, so now I'm going to use 
this brush. It looks like an arrowhead. And I'm going to use the aquamarine to create these other little flowers. And all I did for them was just draw little lines, bring them to the center. And as it dries, it lifts some of the paint and gives you some highlights without even trying. And of course, none of these are real flowers. It's just the illusion of a flower. So now I'm going to create those little red flowers with little petals. Let's go back to our red. For these I used this pointy little one. And all I did was create petals like this. And I guess I can put one more blue here. Now using that same brush, I'm going to go back into my orange. Or you know what? Maybe we'll use the flamingo instead. And I wanted to create these little spray flowers. I, I don't know how else to describe them. So I just did a little dabbing like this. I'm just touching the the uh, paper with the paint.
course, they don't hold a lot of paint, so you have to keep dipping back in to the color and picking up a little bit more paint. But that's not a big deal. Sorry, you might hear my dog in the background who's trying to get into the room where my brother is. And he's being ignored, so he's not very happy right now. All right, so let's throw in some leaves. I'm going to use botanical first. And I used this brush, which kind of has the shape of a leaf. And I just touched it into the paint and then created these leaves by just pushing it down. Very little effort. Diesel, stop. He's having a heart attack, my dog, because he can't get to my brother. He's a little spoiled. So now I used this one, which is a little larger, but it has a very nice fine edge to create the, um, the stems. Now I'm using meadow, but their colors, my colors are all blended in here. So even though it's meadow, it ends up being something else once I put it on the paper. So I'm just drawing some lines, creating some stems here and there. I'm creating these long stems that I will put some leaves on in just a moment. Excuse me. Now I'm going to use this angled brush and I'm going to use the color lettuce. I'm going to mix it in with the green that was there before and I'm just going to touch the paper with the brush. create some leaves on these stems.
I'm, go I'm going into, I'm rather, I'm using the, the pointy little brush because I want to create some uh, leaves around some of these smaller rosebuds. Just a little bit of detail. It's not really picking up the color very well. Okay, let's go back into this brush instead and use the point. Now you see I have some empty spots there, some empty spaces that I need to fill in with something that resembles a flower. So I want to bring some more orange into it. <clears throat> I'm going to use the angled brush. Not I'm going to use the pointy one, and I'm just filling in space. I have to remind myself that when I'm painting, I need to leave my puppy upstairs. He's really not a puppy. He's 10 years old. But he wants to be on my lap all the time. And it's a little hard to paint like that. And that should be enough. Now you want to make sure that this is completely dry. Notice that my vase is not perfect, perfectly square, but I don't mind that, and I'll show you why. This is a um, a blending pen. It's got alcohol in it, and I use it to create the surface on which the vase stands. So I'm just going to create a line. It should be sitting a little bit more onto the surface. I'm going to go a little bit higher. And I'm just blending the paints that are underneath back and forth. This probably needs a little bit more alcohol, and the way you add more is to pull out this little nib and there's an opening in there put a couple of drops of alcohol into it just a couple of drops not a lot put the nib back in <clears throat> and it will wick down and now I can go back to my blending So 
So if you noticed, I touched the painting while it was wet on the bottom and I had a fingerprint on it, but I wasn't concerned because I knew that I would be doing this, which erases that fingerprint. Okay, now it doesn't have to be perfect or wonderful, but it should at the very least be straight as you can get it. <clears throat> also to create the shadow, since my light is coming from this direction, I have some leftover ink in one of the wells. I'm just going to dip the blending pen into it and create my shadow. Again, you want to make sure that this is dry. Also, the blending pen is great for adding highlights. So since my sun is coming from this side, or rather my light, I'm just going to remove some of the paint, or rather ink, to create a highlight here. Also, I want to soften this up a little bit on this side. Now I'm going to take my black gel pen. And give this painting a little bit of life. My lines are not perfectly straight. And that's my favorite part about this, is that nothing is perfect. And I'm going to outline some of my leaves to give them a little bit more detail. Draw a little vein in them. Make sure to clean off your um, gel pen because it does get clogged with the ink. <clears throat> also, I'm going to use the gel pen to kind of accent the rings around the roses. You see, I'm not doing anything perfect. I'm just giving the illusion of roses here. So I'm just drawing rings. And then I have my um, Posca pen. And I'm going to use that to create the centers of these little red flowers that I painted. You can use any color. And I'm going to draw some dots in here to highlight. A little bit more. Make it look like lilies of the valley or maybe some baby's breath.
And you can use the Posca pen to add highlight as well. And I believe that this is finished. Well, I'm going to draw my rosebuds. And all I'm doing is doing a swirl at the bottom. I mean, rather, at the top. And then, like, a cup underneath it. Maybe draw some more stems. And that's it. Very easy. These were very inexpensive. I think I paid like $8 for them and there's nine of them. They can be used for lots of things and I'm sure I'll discover more.